G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again with another C Sharp tutorial. This time we are talking about structs, and that is a short version of the word structure. So in this video, we're going to look at what they are, how you create them, and how you use them. So let's get straight into it and have a look at what the heck is a struct. So let's put in a comment here and look at what they are. So a structure is the ability to create your own custom data type, and this is the greatest way to explain what it is. Because for example, in this video, I want to talk about, let's say, a car. All right. A car can't be explained with just a simple variable. Okay. It can't be just given a string and put all the data in that. You can't just use one integer and put all the data in that. And you can't just use a single float. You have to use a combination of all of those different data types to represent a single car in the real world. Okay. So a car can have things such as its brand. Um, what else can it have? It can have its model can have a year so the year it was made or something like that and you can also have like the price or the base price of a car now there's lots more things that go into making a car than just this but this is a quick example now you can see for each of these different properties a car has there's different data types involved so for example the brand would be a string the model again would be a string the year I would make that an integer just to keep it simple and the price, I would make that a float. So we can have fractional and large numbers as well. Not that we'd ever go above, say, an integer value. But anyway, so you can see that what makes up a car is a lot more complicated than just a single variable. And if I wanted to make one car, I'd make four variables. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm just going to quickly go here and I'm going to go string. And I'm going to use capitals for these um, variables. And I'll explain why in a moment. Okay, string int for year and I want float for price. Okay, so that is making up four variables for a single car and then I can simply use question and answer from the user. So let's quickly ask them the questions to fill it in. Okay, what's brand? Okay, I don't know how I did that. And then we'll go brand equals console read line. And then we'll do the same thing for all the other properties there. So we'll go one for make, one for year, one for price. Okay, I'll just quickly change that up in front of your eyes. What's the model? It's a model. Whoa, that did not work. Move it out. Uh, what is the, what's the year? Okay, and because that's an integer, I have to do my int.pass in front of console read line. And then the final one that I'm going to do is going to be, what's the price? And we simply go price equals, and then we'll have to do float.pass, like so. All right. So if I run this program, it's all well and good. We're asking for four different properties of a single car. Now, let's say, for an example, I have two cars. Well, then I'm going to have to go brand two, model two, year two, price two, and then do all that code again. And I don't feel like it because I'm too lazy. So that's when structures are going to come in here. We can create a structure which represents a single car. And then we can create as many variables using our custom data type. So I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to do this in between this code block with class program and static void main. So just up here. So I'm going to go struct to create a structure. And then I name my data type. So this one I'm going to call car. Keep it simple. Open and close some code blocks and then you specify what properties make a car so we basically do this again the only difference I'm actually going to cut and paste these cut paste and the difference here is you put the word whoops silly touchpad we simply put the word public on the front all right and with that done you've created basically a representation of a car and you've put four properties within the car you've got a brand model year and price that makes up a single car now you'll see we've got errors down here now the way we're actually going to use this structure as i've specified a couple of times you've created a custom data type and before you can use a data type like string or integer you have to declare a variable so here's a quick example so if i want to make a car and store some data about a car create a variable of data type car and let's call it car one. Simple as that. All right. And the way we now access all these properties is we put the variable name, not the data type name. And you'll see all of our properties are in there just by putting car one and the magic dot after it. 
So now brand, model, year, and price all are inside of car one. So if I want to make a second car now, all I have to do is go car, car two. Okay, and if I want a third car, same thing again, car three, and just so forth, okay? And it's really simple to do that. Now you can see why I've used the capital letters as well in my properties. It just looks nicer to have a capital B, capital M, capital Y, and capital P on the front of those. And that's a really basic example of how to use a structure, okay? You create your data type, or you name it here, and then you put all your properties inside of it, and then just use it like normal variables, because that's what they are. They're really just normal variables. They just have this big box that they're stored in, okay? If you imagine one giant box for the car, and then four little boxes down below, okay? And to give you one last example before I finish up this video, okay, I'm pretty much done, but I like to always give a couple of examples in the real world. Let's say, for example, I have a program which is going to store data about my employees of my company, okay? So I'm gonna make a structure called employee, all right? Make my data block, and I'm gonna have four properties. The first property is going to be the first name of my employee. Second property is going to be their last name, as you can guess. The third one, I'm gonna make a float, and that's going to be their wage. Or no, let's be more specific, hourly wage. And then the last one, I'm gonna make a Boolean and call it completed training. Maybe of a fresh company and stuff like that. So once you've created your structure for employees, okay, I'll put a capital C on that one there, then basically we can start creating some employees. So I'm gonna come down below here and just start doing that. So employees, and then I'll just say employee one. And then I'll just start filling employee one with some data, Mr. Nee. So first name, Nicholas and C. Again, just like variables, I can fill them up if I already have the data. Dingle, and this could come from the console like before, it could come from a text file, it could come from an Excel file, come from anything really. Um, I'm gonna give myself $35.70 an hour because I'm just that good. Now there's an error there which I'll fix in a second and I have completed the training. Just need to put an F because that's a float. And this is structures guys, this is how you create them, okay? Up above is how you define them and this is how you use them. Okay, I hope to help you out and I hope you liked the video. And if you did, there's like, subscribe and comment down the bottom. I'd love to hear from you. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video where we're going to talk about arrays and that's gonna be a big one. So thanks very much for watching everybody and I'll catch you then.